The question is, what is the right yarn for loom knitting? Hey, it's Denise from loomahead.com and I have to tell you that nowadays there are so many options of sizes and shapes of looms, some in large gauge and others small gauge. It's confusing and sometimes the manufacturers are nice enough to tell you what yarn they recommend and is that the right yarn for that particular loom? Well, it can be. But I'll tell you that in my opinion, there is no wrong yarn for loom knitting. Let's take for example the large gauge loom. And large gauge doesn't mean the size of the loom or the peg count or the size of the base. It's actually the space between the middle of one peg and the next. So taking this one into consideration, this manufacturer says you should use a number five chunky yarn. But what happens if you go up and use a super bulky? I did. When I did the Perlinate oversized cowl, I used a number six super bulky, which is higher weight. Well, what if I go down to the worsted weight, which was not recommended? Here is my large eyelid rib stitch done single strand with worsted weight yarn. And sure, sometimes they tell you to add another strand and you could do that for a number of reasons, including the effect. So the trick question is, how low can I go with this large gauge loom? Personally, I went all the way down to finger weight, which is a number one, also known as a sock weight. Here, when I did the Higby poncho, I used a very thin weight yarn because of the effect that I wanted and I will use the right loom and the right yarn. For this particular pattern this is what worked well for me and so that's what I used contrary very much so to the manufacturer recommendation. So am I saying that it's the stitch and not the yarn? Well yes and no. To kind of explain here is a clip from the video Knitting Looms five backs. Here I have a little hat that was done on a 24 peg loom and it has 25 rows. Here I have a hat made on a 24 peg loom with also 25 rows. They are exactly the same product, the same yarn, the same pattern on the same loom. What is the difference? Well, it's the stitch effect. That's what I call it. This is done with a U-wrap knit stitch and this is done with an E-wrap knit stitch. So your choice of stitch can determine the size of your finished product just as much as your loom. And so it's always a good idea to test certain stitches out before you make the decision to make them and understand that it's not always your loom's fault that your hat turned out too small. However, there can be a wrong loom for your yarn. If you want to get really frisky and decide that you want to use jumbo yarn, you might just have to get yourself a sippy loom, which works great with this yarn. The best advice that I can give you is to learn how to loom knit a swatch. So let's start by explaining what a swatch is. Basically, it's just a small sample of your project. And how do you create this? The first thing you're going to do is pick the project or pattern, pick the loom and the yarn. And the second thing you're going to do is you're going to knit this. So following the pattern or freestyling, knit you know, a couple of rows and then measure to make sure that the project will measure up correctly. And that's it. That's a swatch. If necessary, you may have to correct things by changing the loom, the yarn, the stitch or the tension. If you don't want to swatch, then use a pattern exactly as it's written with all its recommendations. Well, one last thing to make things a bit interesting. Here you go. 